okay. <laughs> and so I was pretty crushed. And yeah, I looked at her on Facebook and her husband's kind of dorky. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, so I was pretty crushed. I was very upset. Obviously, you know how uh, some of you, you guys out there, you know how sensitive you are. You know, I got all my buddies told me to drop dead for a year, <laughs> at least, every time they saw me. Because, um, you know, guys are sensitive like that. And uh, so, but the, the interesting thing about the scar is I never dealt with it at all. And it, it sounds kind of silly, and it sounds like it wasn't a big deal. I did not have the courage to ever ask another girl out till the end of my junior year in high school. And it, it's, which sounds silly because I'll talk to a wall now, but <laughs> up until then, I really couldn't deal with it whatsoever. Um, so I don't know, I, I, didn't, I didn't go to God. There was no magic, no magic ending. Um, I did a lot of stupid things as I, when I was growing up, and it was not blamed on this, but, you know, when you don't, when you don't deal with things and you don't ask for help and you don't turn to God, um, turn to your friends and, you know, use your faith, you're going to go in the wrong direction. Um, but I will tell you, ladies, that's not an appropriate response. <laughs> so if somebody asks you out, maybe no thank you <laughs> would be good. Um, and, uh, and guys, I'll tell you from most of the ladies in the room that they don't want to tell you drop dead, but they're just as nervous. I know most of you are nervous. It's okay. Just talk. Just, you can talk again. You don't have to wait till your junior year to talk. <laughs> so. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. So Greg Clark is one of our adult volunteers who's with us every Sunday morning. So if you don't know him, um, be sure to say hi to him next time. So we hear two different kind of stories there and two different ways of dealing with things that we heard from Molly and that we heard from Greg. Um, so I've talked about these three band-aids that we often put on. Um, we often, we deny it, we pout, um, or we might explode. These are ways that we often respond. And then there's other things that we tend to do, especially when we get into high school, where Greg kind of alluded to some of this, that we start experimenting with, thing, with things. Where when we're going through hurt and we don't know what else to do, um, there's, we're going to talk about the healthy responses in a minute. But a lot of times the things that we do, and we try things out. We try out drugs, or we try out alcohol, or inappropriate relationships with people, end up doing things that we later have mistakes. Um, or a lot of times we do self-degrading things to ourselves, where we withdraw ourselves from people, or eating disorders, or cutting. A lot of times those are the mechanisms that we turn to to try and deal with our hurt. But often... And almost always, those kind of things just lead to more scars. So a lot of times, we're just having scars on top of scars on top of, on top of scars because of all this hurt that's built up. But the way to turn from that, um, the way to start healing properly, is to say, I can deal with it. Those are ways of dealing with it, but saying, I can deal with it in positive ways and in good ways, and recognizing that Jesus can heal these. That's the way that we're going to turn um, to have healthy responses from our scars. So we're going to look at a scripture passage. It's Luke 19. It's an example of a guy who found healing from an encounter with Jesus. So in Luke 19, it says, Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was one of the most influential Jews in the Roman tax collecting business, and he had become a very rich man. So if you all are living in the Roman Empire, and I'm a tax collector, and I walk up to you, and I'm like, hey, Tiffany, I go up to your home, and I say, give me 50 shekels. What's Tiffany going to do? What are you going to do, Tiffany? I'm coming to you, and I'm demanding 50 shekels. I'm the tax collector. I come around all the time. What are you going to do? <laughs> She's going to say, make me, yeah. Um, I am going to make you, and you're going to give me 50 shekels. But the thing that I know is that I only have to actually give the Roman government probably about 30. So what do you think i do with that other 20? Uh, yeah, I pocket that other 20. Because I know that I really only have to turn in about 50 of those shekels that Tiffany gives, or 30 of those that Tiffany gives me. 
But this is how Roman tax collectors made their money. And the government doesn't really care. They just care that they get their portion of what's demanded. So this is why tax collectors are often, they often don't have many friends, but they're often fairly wealthy. But that wealth doesn't always make you happy. So they've got all this money, but they're really hated by a lot of people. So this is Zacchaeus. And he knows that song. Does anybody know that song, Zacchaeus? Yeah. Um, Awesome. Yeah, I didn't know if it would break. Just a couple people want to sing it? Okay. Um, So Jesus is walking through this crowd here, and we'll pick back up in the verse where it says he tried. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowds. So Zacchaeus, what does Zacchaeus do? Runs into a tree. He ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree beside the road so he could watch from there. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, quick, come down. For I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. So Zacchaeus is, or Jesus is walking through this town. And pretty much everywhere Jesus goes, there's a crowd. So he's walking through, probably lots of people around, which I imagine lots of distractions, lots of people trying to talk to him. And he notices Zacchaeus perched up in a tree. I'm thinking that might be a little creepy. Might be a little strange. He's probably like, what, you know, what's this guy doing? But he's Jesus, so he knows what he's doing. So he doesn't just say, hey, get out of there. You know, what's going on? He calls him by name, which I think is significant. One, we know that Jesus knows our name. Two, that probably even more tells us that Zacchaeus' reputation really preceded him. He was really not a good guy. People know about who Zacchaeus, the tax collector, is. So Jesus tells him, get out of the tree. So, you know, up there perched like a bird up in a tree. He says, get out of the tree. And I'm coming over to your house. I can't imagine what Zacchaeus probably felt like at that moment in time. This guy knows my name and he wants to come over to to my house. If he he knows my name, he must know that not many people like me. People don't usually come to my house. I'm a tax collector. And back in Roman culture back then, if you sat at a dinner table with somebody, that really said a lot about if you honored and respected them. So the next thing it says in verse 7, it picks up, the crowds were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumble. So these religious leaders are really, I mean, they're, they're ticked off that Jesus is going over to this guy's house to eat dinner with him. Um, this guy, Zacchaeus, who lived a scarred life. Yes, he was doing bad things, but that meant he had hurt. He was hurting other people. And I really think that he probably just didn't know how to change. He didn't know how to get out of this pattern of life that he was living in. And then it says, Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, I will give half of my wealth to the poor, Lord. And if I've overcharged people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. And Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a son of Abraham. And I, the son of man, have come to seek those who are lost. So in this story, we see that Jesus welcomes our healing. He knows Zacchaeus' name just like he knows our name. And you might be able to hide your pain from everyone else in this room, but Jesus knows it. He already knows what we're going through. So Zacchaeus could have played it safe. He could have just stayed up in the tree, not allowed Jesus into his life. He could have just been like, you know what? I I don't want to go there. I'm just going to keep moving on. But he did the opposite of what felt safe. So we're just going to look at four things of what encouraged you to do to heal from um, your hurts. So just like Zacchaeus, you can invite people, safe people that you trust into your life and invite you during your small groups time tonight. You've been talking about these um, the last two weeks on Sunday nights. And if you're not in a small group, please let me know and we'll get you, um, get you to be a part of one. Um, but I invite you, if you haven't shared yet, if you haven't shared one of your scar stories during small group times, do that tonight. Or confide in some safe friends or adults you know and trust. Um, Don't let the fear of rejection keep you from sharing. Because what have we said about scars? Everybody has them. We all have different scars. We have different levels that we've experienced and felt at this point in life. But everybody has them. And the second thing that I encourage you to do is to turn to God with these scars as well. Maybe you have things in your past that are mistakes that you've done. You've chosen to cause this scar and this hurt. You have the opportunity to confess that to God. But there might also be things that you had nothing to do with it. It was something that was done to you or done naturally. Sometimes there's accidents and there's things in life that don't have answers. Travis talked about that last week, um, that God often doesn't, his plan is not for us to hurt, but hurt happens. And God wants to restore that. 
So you don't have a need to confess because you might not be in the wrong in some situations. But when we just bring it to God, when we just share, when we just present that to him, there's something really healing and therapeutic that can happen there. And the third thing is, just like Zacchaeus, we have a choice. We can stay out of the tree or we can jump out and commit to change. And repent might seem kind of like a churchy word, um, but that's just something that means to turn around. So for Zacchaeus, after he came out of the tree, he kind of made a, he said to Jesus, you know, for the people I've hurt, I want to change it. I want to do something different. I want to start helping these people. Um, So that was how he wanted to turn around. He wanted to make a change there and commit to just not living um, in that pain anymore. And we have that same opportunity. And then the fourth thing is realize that God can use your story. We all have these scars. And just like, again, Travis talked about last week about talking about God's plans for our life. We don't believe that that's God's plan for us to suffer and to live in that. Um, But instead, he offers us Jesus to move past it. Um, And even all all of our faults, all of our failures, all the things that happen to us that make us hurt, God can use that, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because God doesn't waste our hurts. I had this friend, Tina, when I was in college. That was her name, um, Tina. And she was one of my best friends when I was at Clemson. And one day when she was walking out to her car, and this was at on-campus apartments, it was really close to campus. It wasn't, like, real far away or anything. And this is where she was living. And she was walking out to her car, and this man approached her. She doesn't know why, still to this day, she doesn't know why, but he kind of threw her into the car, and she, she's a really feisty girl. She's short, but she's really athletic, really strong, and she was fighting back, and she fought back with him. Um, luckily, no damage other than a few kind of bumps and bruises happened. She doesn't know if he was trying to attack her um, physically or if he was just trying to get her keys and steal her car, um, but she was able to fight him off. I don't have any advice for that situation. I don't know necessarily what she should have done. But in, in this scenario, she, she fought him, and she just ended up with a few, like I said, bumps and bruises. And he eventually ran off and ran away. Um, he, she said that he seemed really kind of distraught, not like he was all there at the time that this happened. So this is a scenario where something was done to her. It wasn't a mistake she made. Something happened to her. And the only person to blame is this guy. This guy is the one who, who caused this. Um, and so this caused a lot of hurt and pain for her. And she was kind of like, I don't know why this happened. This was scary. This is dangerous. Um, but then a couple years later, she was working at a summer camp. And several of the girls in her cabin one night really opened up and shared. And they had been attacked physically, but much worse happened to them. Um, and they had a lot of pain and a lot of hurt. And she was able to really, really share with them, really open up. And while she's never glad that this happened to her, she was so thankful that God was, did not waste this story. God was able to use this to really help and counsel some other people. So while God didn't cause that to happen to her, God used that story, used her as an instrument to really speak and really share with some people. We are going to have one more scar story that we're going to hear from today. And so Brittany Hopmeyer is going to come up. Let's welcome Brittany. So Brittany is going to come and share one of her, here's my water bottle, one of her stories. Um, And then just so y'all know, if you didn't know this, next Sunday there'll be um, a short teaching, but it won't last the whole time. And we've video interviewed several of y'all and some of our adult volunteers with their stories that we'll be hearing from next Sunday. So we'll hear from Brittany today.